we all feel the strain a little bit. We've dealt with many, many months of lockdowns. We have seen restrictions to our daily lives. Many of us have not spent any significant time away from home for the past year. And so it's easy to feel a little bit trapped. On top of that, many of us are still leaders in organizations and we are still required to perform to the same level as we have before. Just that now everything is a little bit different. We don't see our teams. We have to work from home. We have to utilize new technology. And very often we come to this question, why is my team not performing? And then it's very easy to conclude it's them. Except that there may be other reasons as well. And that is exactly what I want to talk to you in this video about. I'll give you a little bit of food for thought and then leave you with a few practical thoughts of what you can do to bring your team back to the performance that you seek. If you haven't seen me before, my name is Kai. I've spent over 20 years in the financial industry leading various teams. And once or twice during that time, I also asked myself, why is my team not performing? And just like you, I said, well, must be something about them. But you guessed it, because a possible other answer is it could be me. And here's why. Nobody wants to hear about that it could be me who is the cause for some underperformance. But it can happen, especially in times like these, where you are not as close to your team as you used to be. And so one of the things that could happen is that you lack a little bit of clarity. Are you crystal clear about exactly the things that you expect from your team? See, before you walked over to their desk and you had a chat and everybody was quite clear about what needed to be done. Today, that is much more difficult where you are remotely away from your employee and they may not always reach out. They may have an impression, they may have something in their mind that they think you might want from them, but that might not match your specific idea. In order to resolve that situation, you need to work on your clarity. Maybe when you assign or delegate a task, put in a little bit more detail. Maybe make it a little bit more outcome oriented. Tell them exactly what result you would want. Not necessarily all the steps that they need to take, but the things that you wish to receive in return. And very similar to that is that you also have to focus a little bit more on goals. People want to feel that you acknowledge that some of the situation, some of the environment has changed and that needs to be reflected in the way that you set goals with them. There are some interesting scientific studies that suggest that even if you insert a small level of uncertainty into any environment, productivity levels will go down and the way people perceive goals change inherently. And suddenly it is better to ask for small little improvements that they can achieve compared to how they performed yesterday rather than some big grandiose goal and vision, which in previous times you could very easily get away with. And the third thing I want to mention is that you have to pay even closer attention to protect your employees from the level of management above you. Now it's very easy that maybe you receive an email from your manager and you hit that forward button and it forwards it to one of your employees and you say something like, can you please address it or can you please solve this problem? And so unfiltered, you take something that comes from your boss and you hand it over to your team. And now you're not doing your job because your job is number one, to protect your employees from whatever you receive from your management and make sure that then you can filter that down and apply it to the different employees in your team to play to their strengths and to explain to them why something needs to be done. Now, fair enough, it's not always them. And equally, it is not always me. Sometimes it is about how we interact with each other. So ask yourself whether the level of communication that you have with your team resembles a little bit what you had with them before. And if that isn't the case, there's nothing wrong with asking your team members how they like to interact with you. Because not one size fits it all. Some people like to be left to their own devices and maybe they want to connect only once a day and want to be left alone to do their tasks. Other people need a little bit more constant interaction, especially when you work in a team that has a more creative side to it, you may need that interaction to actually get 
to solutions. And yes, of course, the environment plays a role in the performance of your team as well. Remote work is hard, really hard. And it is so hard because it goes against what we are as a human race. We are social animals. We want to talk to people. And that is not always talking about something that concerns our business. That's not always talking about something that is a task at hand. And let's be honest, when we go onto a Zoom call or when we have a conference call, our expectation is that we do something productive. And so we cut out all the fluff and we cut out all the things that would happen in a social interaction. Don't make the same mistake. Take the time to have this social interaction. Take the time to ask about their kids and their family. Take the time to ask them whether they are coping well with their current situation and ask them whether there's something that you can do more of or less of. What I'd like to know is whether you are in the right environment, in the right space of mind, whether you are able to click the like button, because for the very low price of zero dollars, that tells YouTube that there's something of value here. And then I make more of this and then I see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.